Assalamu alaikum family It's your brother Calvin Brother Greco Today I'm on the highway And I'm, I'm riding out to see my brother Thomas Mooney He invited me out to the Sufi farm Today To get a sneak peek at The book he's been working on It's entitled Sufism and the Nation of Islam so often in the nation of Islam, we get accused of shirk, not being true Muslims. And we believe that we, we were given the book of supreme wisdom, meaning this wisdom is supreme. It doesn't mean that this wisdom is the only wisdom. We believe that it's supreme because in it contains all wisdom. And no matter where you go, you will find this teaching. And in this teaching, you will find all teaching. So this is this wisdom is pregnant. So we don't believe that Master Farah Muhammad brought us a new teaching. We believe that he brought us an ancient teaching that was hidden for a time. We do believe that a new book is coming. But right now, we believe that he came to remind us of what we already knew. So, I'm traveling here to the farm to sit with my brother Thomas. He's excited about this new project, and I, I am as well. So, let's just get a look into our brother's work uh, Sufism in the Nation of Islam. Assalamu alaikum. Manifested in the human being, or like how the human being reflects a lie. You know, the 90, 99 names, like only thing in the universe that can reflect a lie perfectly is the human being, according to Ibn Arabi. Ibn Arabi, they call him, Sufis call him Sheikh al Akbar, the greatest Sheikh. And he was from Spain, maybe yeah. around 1000 AD, sometime around then. And uh, they still study his works today. They, they say he was the greatest teacher. So Ibn Arabi says that, that Allah created both human beings and the universe in his own form. And uh, he said they both display traces of the divine attributes. But he said if, if man were to leave the cosmos, the cosmos would die. The universe would die, collapse in on itself. I heard the, you know, the minister teach that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that if all people were to somehow be destroyed, which couldn't happen, but human beings were to be destroyed, that the universe would collapse in on itself. And out of that triple darkness of space would come again, uh, a black man would come again. You know, because when I heard that the teaching of the nation of Islam is so unorthodox, right? And it's also like that with the Sufis. It's a, it's a little unorthodox, you know, unorthodox in this world. You know, so when when I read about you know a lot manifested in, in human form, you know I don't hear that in in uh, Orthodox Islam. You know, they'll be the ones that'll say no, you know this is shirk or something like that. But you find elements of that in Sufism, like this. You know, when Ibn Arabi is breaking down how the human being can reflect all the attributes of God, and then the prophets and the saints are ones who who have mastered that. The Sufis. A lot of Sufi saints and Sufi teachers were killed because their ideas were so unorthodox and a threat to the religious order of the day. That, But the religious order of the day had become corrupt. So when they tried to bring out the spirit of the rituals or the spirit of the law, which is what a Sufi is about, you know, the heart. And not just book knowledge, but going into the inner, inner meanings of it. So 
like Halaj was teaching, because he had evidence from a hadith that you can do Hajj, your pilgrimage, at home if you feed a certain amount of orphans or something like that. You can fulfill a requirement for that. But that would threaten the business of Hajj. So those people that run that didn't like those type of teachings, you know. And at the time that Halaj was, was alive, Al Halaj, they murdered him. But at the time he was alive, uh, he said they were talking about it was corrupt, the rulership of that day, the caliph and the bankers. So he was speaking out against them all. You know, yeah, he was speaking out against the bankers and, and um, you know, the, the corrupt rulers of his day. And um, they had 84 scholars of his day sign his death warrant. When they, when they brought him in front of the people. And they accused him of, of blasphemy because he said that I'm, not, not I'm alive, but basically in other words, but he was saying that out of the fact that he himself was emptied and Allah was the only reality, you know, so he was able to say that. Mm -hmm. So the Sufis say that when, when, when Pharaoh said, I am God, that was, um, you know, him and his ego saying that. But when Halaj said it, there was no ego present. It was only, he was emptied of ego. So he, the eye was different. Mm. You know, yeah. the eye was the Allah, you know, the real eye of the human being, the self. Mm. That's what the Sufis yeah. will talk about. When we can become empty, the self. So Sheikh Hisham and the Sheikhs, like the main teaching is to be nothing, like to be nobody. You know, that way you don't think much of yourself. And then be humble. And then, and they, they actually, do things to us like uh, to beat us down kind of and beat our ego down that way we really know that we're nothing and then when we become nothing a lot could could, could work through us you know, well he can't use egotistical people <laughs> right <laughs> but it's hard it's definitely it's not easy they say that too man the Sufism is not to be this to be nothing is not easy yeah, we need a lot help he said a baby has so many servants, a lot of points for him because he accepts his own weakness so totally. He's like, we gotta grow up and be a baby again that way in Allah's presence though, so that he'll appoint helpers to us. But we need to recognize that we, we are in need of help, of Allah's help. If you have any experience of spiritual groups, you will know that too many people focus their attention on the teacher and not the teaching. Indeed, this is such a frequent abuse that some people become completely fixated on a teacher, whether true or false. So they teach us that too, you know, to, to not be personality worshippers, you know. Yeah. Heavy. And they, and they teach that the teachings get renewed in conformity with the place, time, people involved in the needs of the process. So the teachings are not the same in one place to the next. They're suited to the needs of that people, you know. So you, you don't use, you know, Eastern methods to, 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 on Western people. You know, you might take elements of this and that, you know, but the scientist knows how to make the perfect recipe for the people that he's dealing with, you know. That's the science of that. That's what Master Far Muhammad did, you know. Exactly what he did. He came and found a people in a specific situation. He crafted a, a teaching. It's Islam, but he made it in a way that suited the needs of that people, considering the time and the place of the people. You know, it's wisdom. It's not just doing. It's not just basic religion. And that's not, and that's something we have to come out of, right? You know, just this religion that divides us. The, the Sufi, like the Sheikh was teaching in, in one of his books, but I was reading just last night about a non-sincere Muslim or a sincere Christian. Like, which one's better? You know, it's better to be a, a sincere person. Don't say you're Muslim, but then you, 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 you're not nice with people. How could we do that? A lot of life for man. Man, you got some of the Sheikhs who, who really, like, they fast. I read about a Sheikh, one of the Grand Sheikhs, um, that ate one meal a week. He ate one seventy-seven days. And some of them were so strict on their dietary practices that one sheikh grew his own wheat and made his own bread and that's all he would eat, just his own, from his own hands. Because the spiritual energy that, that goes into the food that we eat can affect us. And they're trying to be fine-tuned, you know, and the food, the vibrations of the food could affect us. The messenger thought that, that, you know, that, that we're supposed to be clean and have love when we cook cooking food. The, the sisters put their hands in the food and put all that love in it. 
I'm trying to that bean pies taste so good. <laughs> <laughs> Ibn Arabi talked about the gods of belief and um, he said in actual fact everyone is an idol worshiper because everyone worships a god that he fabricates in his own mind whether or not he names it God in effect everyone worships himself because what we worship is what we conceptualize grasp believe and understand Whatever object of worship it may be and wherever it draws us, it cannot be outside of our own selves. What is outside of the self is unknown and inaccessible, unperceived and un unfathomable. So this is what he was saying, and, and that's something, that's the first sentence in our message to the black man. Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, people who did not have the knowledge or the reality of God, uh, they worship their own ideas of God. That might be a little paraphrase, mm -hmm. but... But that's, that's the first sentence in that book, Message to the Black Man. He said they worship their own ideas of God because they didn't have the knowledge or the reality of God. A Sufi is like considered a saint. And when I was studying like in the theology of time, and when I first started studying Islam, and Honorable Elijah Muhammad talked about one out of every hundred uh, Muslims in the East can tune in and like read minds, basically. And they said he can do that too, you know. And then when I start reading about Sufis, like that's one of their attributes that they have. So the Sufis are basically saints of Islam, people who have achieved through their dedication to Allah uh, a level with with Allah that Allah accepts him as a friend, you know. And then and that goes with something I read from the beginning, like the Honorable Elijah Muhammad talked about. He said, when a righteous person becomes so righteous and gets so close to Allah that Allah accepts him as his friend and then the wills of each is with each other and what one wills the other wills mm -hmm. so in Arabic the saints are, are known as the awliya you know and or that's a plural for the saints awliya awliya Allah basically you know the friends of Allah mm -hmm. friends so awliya wali is a friend so if somebody's a saint he's a wali mm -hmm. wali's for Muhammad you know you know mm -hmm. and uh, that's it you know they they're saints and when somebody has that closeness with Allah it's like there's a hadith that Allah says whenever one of my servants approaches me through supererogatory worship I become his eyes that he sees with and the ear that he hears with so that's how they get those different tuning in and they don't get that um, because it necessarily they want those things it's Allah gives people gifts so that they can better serve him you know and uh, Sufis really they'll sum it up as saying that yes we are servants of the people you know because we don't make ourselves of anything mm -hmm. and that's it you know Sufi serves the community Sheikh Hisham Kabani Mulana he, Sheikh Hisham he, he, um, he learned from Sheikh Nazim so the way the Sufis teach like they learn from their teacher who learns from his teacher and they always give respect to the teacher they don't give they don't put it on themselves you know, they say, my teacher said so-and-so, so-and-so, to keep us humble. So that way, and they don't give themselves titles. The Sheikh he was teaching about that, too. You know, about uh, those fake Sheikhs that, that make themselves Sheikhs and give themselves titles and names. Sheikhs teach us run from titles. You know, we don't want no titles. Mm -hmm. We want to be just humble servants of Allah. You know, and if Allah gives somebody a title, you know, that's what they got to take. But then they say that the, the real burden that the sheikhs carry is heavy. So I don't know why somebody really would want that anyways. But, you know, because <laughs> they carry us, man. And, you know, they, they carry the Uma. And the sheikh was teaching about titles, you know, and about fake fake sheikhs, you know. And, and he said, uh, sheikh, this is one of Sheikh Hisham's books. And he was talking about people, today they must have titles. Whether they embody the reality of the role or not, whereas an, uh, an authentic guide must fulfill actual duties. Uh, among other things, he must have the power to purify lazy students, the ones who don't do their daily bicker that they're supposed to do. Shake the, the marid or the disciple is supposed to submit to the shake, like supposed to follow what his shake tells him. So the, in the Naqshbandi, um, Grand Shake said, he talked about the three, um, the three pins or three nails that we got keeping our forehead things that to remember and one of them 
is, you know, if the, if the shake gives you a cup and tells you to empty out the ocean with it, you just do it. Yes. You surrender to your teacher with love. That you, really, that's the secret, is the love that the student has for the teacher and the love carries them to the, to the divine presence, you know, they say. So they talked about when, when um, in, in this book, in the restricted law Islam, but the minister was talking about the love that, that Donald Elijah Muhammad had for, for Master Farda Muhammad. And so it said, like, the student is supposed to love the teacher so much that only the teacher lives inside of him. Like, that's what the sheikhs teach. So Sheikh Isham reflects his teacher. You know, that's why we say he's the sheikh, you know, because that's the love that the student has that, that at a certain point he takes on the characteristics of his teacher because that's a living example. Because the Sufis say we need a living guide, a living example to show us how to be divine and pleasing to Allah. Because that's why they say you need a sheikh or somebody to, to guide you to that place. And they said that, the minister said about Donald Elijah Muhammad loved Master Farda Muhammad so much that he wanted to die in order that Master Farda Muhammad may live in him. The Sufis say you have to die before you die, you know. And they said Master Farda Muhammad wooed him like a man woos a woman. And he made the Honorable Elijah Muhammad fall so much in love with him that the messenger began to speak like him. He wanted to be just like his master. And that's exactly what we try to do with the Sheikh, you know, and I, I love Sheikh Hisham so much, you know, and like, I'm in love, you know, with the teacher, you know, and, you know, I do my best to try to reflect, you know, but they say we're weak students, you know, but we, and our weakness is our strength, you know, die, be nothing, that way they can use us, but we're little ants, like Sheikh Nazim said, when he was with his Sheikh, he, felt like he was an ant with a broken, broken leg trying to walk from Damascus to uh, Mecca, <laughs> you know. But the same thing the, uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, he felt like a dirty worm next to Master Card Muhammad. Mm. You know, it's like when you go around a holy person and a master, you know, that's how you're supposed to feel, you know. It's like, Allahu Akbar, man. <laughs> it's like, you know, the clean glass and... Because we all have dirtiness, and then when you have a really clean glass, it's like, ah, oh, man, you know. It's not the best feeling, but it's it's developmental, where it, it shows us ourselves. Like the Hadith, the Prophet said, the believer is the mirror to his brother believer. Mm -hmm. So when we see the believer, the one that's really you know, the, the, the reflecting those characteristics perfectly, it reflects us perfectly, and it shows everything good or bad in us. So that's the science of it. So that way, because the Sheikh Hisham, and, and they say, like Sheikh, Sheikh Nazim said, to leave one forbidden action is better than doing something like 100,000 Hajj or something like that. To leave just one forbidden action is better than doing all these religious worships. If we can't do that, then our worship is meaningless. And he said that it's better to not pray than to pray and be proud of our prayers. He said we're idol worshipers if we worship for rewards from Allah. We worship Allah because we, we want to serve Him and become a better servant of Allah. Right? That's like the Sufi teachings. It's not, you do this and you get that, you know. Like, you, you pray and you get this reward and you do this, you know. It's I'm a part of the, uh, the Naqshbandi community, the Naqshbandi uh, Sufi tradition. And that's a tradition that goes back, you know, well over a thousand years. So each shape had a teacher that had a teacher that they trace a lineage back to the Prophet, you know. So, so Sheikh Hisham learned from Sheikh Nazim who learned from Grand Sheikh um, Abdullah Fayez of Dagestan, who learned from Sheikh Sheriff Houdin, right? So that's how it, it is passed down. And uh, Sheikh Hisham was, was ordered by his teacher to come here for the wise purposes of Sufis, you know. And that's, the, that's what the Naqshbani tradition really, the Sheikhs really try to embody the Sunnah of the Prophet to a T. So they'll use the miswak, they do everything. They want to be in tune with the prophet, you know, and they wear the, the turban and everything. But again, they teach us not to just wear the turban, but to wear the turban in our heart, meaning have good characteristics in our heart, right? So, you know, they, they said, you know, Sufism requires us to carry everyone's burdens and not put ours on anyone. It's like the minister, the messenger. Mm. They carry the burdens of the people. 
and, and they're so patient with the people because of their love for the people that eventually that love is going to win out, right? It's going to win out in the end. And it's the same on a smaller scale in, a, in the Sufi community. The sheikhs have so much love and I mean, we can be some rotten, you know, characteristic sometimes, you know, but the sheikhs are patient with us, you know, and because and, they know we're learning. You know, I thought I was mature four, five, six years ago, you know, I thought I knew something, you know, but then when they start showing you different reflections of yourself, then you start realizing, I need to improve this, I need to improve that. And so then I just start realizing that I'm not good, I got to be better, you know, and I, I think that's the space that they want us in, you know, but, uh, I think that's where we're going to stay at. <laughs> A lot like that. that was Imam Sultan. I called in on, on a blog talk radio show and I asked uh, Imam uh, Sultan about the uh, Sufis. And he said that he had a table talk that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad um, was, was speaking. And some of the uh, believers at the time asked him about uh, some Sufis, some books that they were reading about Sufis. And Imam Sultan said that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, yes, we believe in the saints. Like that was his short response. We believe in the saints. And it's like he said in the theology of time, like when a righteous person becomes so righteous, Allah accepts him as a friend. And that Sufism summed up the saints. The, um, they, there's a hierarchy of saints too. You know, they, they, they submit. Like there's a law and order within the saintly community. You know, that, that way it keeps order. But that sums it up when they say that the, when a righteous person becomes so righteous, that Allah accepts him as a friend, and in Arabic, that's what it means when you're a saint. You know, you're a friend with Allah, and that's a high station. You know, I don't think we can, most of us can't claim that, you know, but until we really reflect and, and, and fine tune ourselves, and then, and that's in Allah's wisdom. You know, when he, He's the one that takes us to that place. There's been some milita military Sufis for sure, because there's over 41, there's 41 Sufi orders. And throughout history, over a thousand, over fourteen hundred years, you had some um, dervishes that were part of the, um, I believe, the Ottoman Empire. And uh, you would find a lot of times the, the Sufis would be part of the more milita military, military um, um, parts of the society, you know, that they would be in. And they fought, you know. And Sufism has such a rich, rich tradition. You find it in in Asia, uh, India. You find it in in, in Pakistan. Uh, you find it in Arabia and Yemen, you find it in Turkey, you find it in Cyprus, Africa. There's a huge, rich tradition of Sufism in Africa. There was a big sheikh, uh, Sheikh Ahmadou Bamba, I want to say that's his name, uh, Ahmadou Bamba, and he was a great saint that uh, um, the uh, Muradis followed. That's the name of the Sufi order. And he was another one who was exiled from his home and uh, because the French were invading and um, he was exiled and eventually he came back and built a beautiful mosque that a lot of people go to in Senegal. I see a lot of those uh, followers come and see us too because we meet with each other too in different Sufi communities. There's Tijani, there's the Muradi, there's the Naqshbandi, um, Kadari, Chishti, you know, these different Sufi orders, and they all have different little nuances or special, uh, specialties, you know, if you will. To fit the people. Don't even pay me any attention. And we'll get out of here. Say to a lot as we want to hear. Just a bunch of books. They, it's like a paradox. So when they say we're not people of books, but we also need books, you know? Yeah. A lot of those best. We don't just we don't stay in the books. So we come out of the books. We read the books, but then we come out of the books to to live and experience now. Because the Sufi is one who tastes. You know, not we can read about an orange in a book, right? But then when you taste an orange, that's a whole different experience. That you have. Yes.
upon these worthy servants of Allah. As a student of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I could never thank Allah enough for his intervention in our affairs and allowing birth to come on February 26, 1877 to a man in the holy city of Mecca that would one day come to America to bring us Islam and to raise among us the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi. Brothers and sisters, on behalf of the Muslim world, we have the Grand Sheikh of Cyprus, the Grand Sheikh Mohammed Subhi Bello, the Grand Sheikh from Egypt and the Vice President of Al Azhar University, Sheikh Abu Al Azaim, and the Grand Sheikh of Yemen, Sheikh Abu Ghazala. And our Sheikh from Ghana and Nigeria, Dr. Abdul Razak Tahir, who want to show their admiration, and, brother, uh, and our Sheikh Yusuf Shibli, who want to show their appreciation for the leadership of our brother, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, by recognizing him as an Imam of the Muslim world. تمركم وستنهل وستنهمر منه البركات واليمن والخيرات على أمة الإسلام إن هذه العمامة التي وضعت على رأس الأخ الفاضل الوزير الوزير فركان هي شعار الإسلام والعلماء ورثة الأنبياء وبما أنه قائد إسلامي يود جمع كلمة المسلمين والسير بهم نحو العزة والكرامة فقد وضعت هذه العمامة شعار العزة والكرامة والعلم لورثة الأنبياء في الأرض على هذا الرأس المسلم In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, the most beneficent, blessed are you and blessed is this conference. And in the symbol of the leadership and the knowledge of the Quran, we signify that, symbolize that by putting this cap on the head of our leader, Brother Louis Farah Khan, because Because the, the scholars and the knowledgeable of the people are the inheritors of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to signify that, we have put that on his head in order to show our appreciation and to show that he is knowledgeable, knowledgeable and will lead the Islamic nation, inshallah, with his inspiration. Takbir! Takbir! Allahu Akbar! 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 Allahu Akbar!
of the prophets you are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Never, never in my wildest imaginations could I have dreamed that by becoming a student of Islam, under the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who, who taught me of the Quran and showed me the glorious life of the Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah, peace be upon him, who laid the foundation upon which we stand. And only his sunnah, only his way, only his practice will lead us to success in establishing Islam in America and reviving the spirit of Islam in Muslims throughout the world.